cheesy dialogue, mediocre acting, unrealistic fights, 80s music, nostalgia, everything I want in a TV show. I get if people shit on this show or talk bad about it because it's definitely it's definitely not for everybody. I think it's an acquired taste, but because I'm such a huge fan of the Karate Kid franchise, that first movie is probably one of my not even probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Two was was okay. Three was pretty bad, but there was still some enjoyment in three, and I don't even count that next Karate Kid with Hillary Swing. So I'm a huge fan of the Karate Kid. I got the Cobra Kai shirt on. Look, I this this is my shit, and I do feel like season two. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get right on with it. Season two held its own with the first season. Okay, these two are like Godfather one and two. On any given day, you could say which season was better. But I think with season one, it captured lightning in a bottle because it was able to take a beloved franchise like the Karate Kid and blend it with the new generation of characters for this uh, universe and blend it seamlessly where you can appeal to a younger generation, please the old heads like myself, and it just, it, it, it was magic. Like, me and my 13-year-old watched these, uh, these shows, and we enjoyed them, and it's very rare you get me and my daughter watching something on the same TV, and we both enjoying it and interacting with each other, because typically, my daughter hates the things that I love, and vice versa, okay? So, for that to happen, that was a beautiful thing. So right off the bat, the thing I liked about season two was the theme of redemption. I feel like the theme of this season was redemption. And by the way, I'm going to go into spoilers here, okay? So if you have not seen the show, stop this shit because I'm going into spoiler territory. But because th th there was just too much to talk about for me not to spoil anything, okay? Because sometimes I hate doing spoiler-free reviews because I just have to hide so much shit, you know? I'm, I'm as bad as keeping spoilers, I guess, as Mark Ruffalo. Season two... I love the story uh, of redemption. I love how it goes in depth more with these characters and, and their relationships and their inner turmoil. And like, especially with the newer characters, a lot of these characters are fleshed out like uh, like Miguel and Hawk and uh, introduce some new characters like uh, Stingray. <laughs> Stingray was my dude. Like, look, he... he is part of the evil Cobra Kai, but he he's a badass. And you know, speaking of which, I can't even call Cobra Kai evil. You know, uh, when Johnny first started Cobra Kai in season one, he had the same philosophies as John Kreese, which was his sensei. But then by the end of season one, he realized that, shit, I've been wrong this whole time. And I want to take Cobra Kai and make it something different. Yeah, we, we can still kick ass. We can still be badass. But it doesn't have to be this whole no mercy and strike your enemies while they're down and all that. Like, Johnny just turned over a new leaf, and he's trying to continue that. But then John Kreese comes back into his life, played by Martin Cove. And I gotta say, Martin Cove uh, killed it in this role once again. Like, John Kreese is, is Martin Cove. Martin Cove is John Kreese, okay? He plays his character with such menace and such malice. And you hate him, but you love to hate him. Like, he plays him... The, the same as he played him back in, in the first movie, okay? And actually, you hate him even more now because John Kreese comes in there like a Trojan virus <laughs> and just methodically takes the dojo away from Johnny. And you see it coming from the beginning, but uh, just to see how it unfolds because Johnny has a soft place in his heart for, for Kreese because he was like a father to him. But the last time they saw each other, Kreese tried to choke him out. You know, he tried to fuck him up. And when they saw each other again... It was a, a, a badly choreographed fight. It wasn't realistic at all. But like I said, you know, this this is has 80s cheese written all over it. And I'm all about 80s cheese, okay? The fight was pretty bad. But still, it was necessary. It needed to happen. So John Kreese is back in the Cobra Kai. And he's poisoning his students' minds with this, you know, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. But, like, to the 10th power. Especially Hawk. Like, Hawk in this season. Hawk has just gone full Darth Vader. Okay, Hawk is like, you see his backstory on how he was a nerd and everything and how he was crying to he would never get a girlfriend. He's going to be a loser forever. Then you see him now. And it's like, you feel sympathetic for him for like five seconds. And then he's back to being an asshole again, especially to his best friend, uh, Dimitri, who is like an outcast now because all his nerd friends that were, were buddies with him are now going to do Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do. So now he wants to do Miyagi-Do karate. So, um... 
with this new generation of characters, I just love how everything just unfolds with all these characters, especially the, the love triangle between Miguel, Sam, and Robbie, and there's a new character thrown to the mix, uh, Tori. I forgot the, the actress that plays Tori, but she is a badass, and in my opinion, I think she looks better than Sam. I hate to diss Sam because Sam is, she's not a real likable character, but she's such a goody two-shoes. She's such a, a good girl, you know. She's everything you kind of want your daughter to be, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just speaking as an old man, like, if I, like, my daughter should be like that. But it's funny, my daughter doesn't like her at all, so, shit. Okay, I don't know what the fuck I just said. But yeah, but Sam, yeah, Sam is still feeling Miguel, it looks like. Sam is still into Miguel, and it's funny, it's like one of the weird things where it's like, okay, I done moved on, you know, I done got somebody else, but it's like, I see my ex with somebody, and I can't stand to see my ex with this person, it's like that, so, it's like, Sam is with Robbie now, but yet, she's still worrying about what Miguel is doing, and to me, I think Tori's a better fit for Miguel, because like I said, I like Tori, you know, she's real, she seems like a down chick, you know, and she's not all prissy like, like Sam is, so yeah, the whole Sam and Robbie thing, look, I'm not a fan of Robbie, I'm not a fan of Sam. I mean, they do look cute together, but I just don't really care about them. You know, I try to give Robbie a chance this season because I said, okay, he's, he's down with Miyagi-Do. Miyagi-Do was supposed to be um, the, the good guys in this situation, but I still can't get down with Robbie. Even Daniel sees that. You know, when Robbie said, when Robbie said, um, you know, when my dad sees what we're doing, you know, he's going to... He's going to lose his shit or whatever. And I'm like, I'm thinking like Daniel is like, this kid hasn't changed. Like, he's still a, a delinquent, you know. And Daniel, okay, I like Daniel this season better than I liked him last season. Daniel this season, I feel like he's more sympathetic because now he's kind of the underdog. Because even though he has his car dealership, he's trying to start this new dojo to rival the Cobra Kai. But see, everybody likes Cobra Kai because, you know, on the surface... It's some, it's some badass shit, whereas Miyagi-Do, it's all about doing chores and inner peace and balance and all that stuff. Man, kids don't care about that shit. Kids just want to fuck people up, okay? So he's having a hard time getting his dojo off the ground, and he starts to doubt himself. And, and I love the moment. I love the scene where he's walking on the beach, and he sees this person fishing who looks a lot like Miyagi. He's dressed like Miyagi. He has a fishing pole. You hear the Miyagi, the Miyagi music playing in the background, and he gives him some Miyagi-like advice and uh, Mr. Miyagi's presence is definitely felt in this season, even though he's not there. You know, Pat Morita has passed on. You know, the character of Miyagi's passed on. But you feel Miyagi's presence throughout this show. And I feel like it's just a, a great touch to this series. It was cool seeing the Cobra Kai back together again, the old school Cobra Kai. Okay, there's a reunion with Johnny and, uh, well, who is it? Uh, Tommy, Bobby, and there was another guy, uh, Jimmy, which I really don't remember. And um, only one was missing is Dutch. And to me, besides Johnny, Dutch was my favorite Cobra Kai. It sucks that he couldn't be in this season, but I think the actor, Chad McQueen, he didn't want to be in it. He's no longer acting. He hasn't been in the business in over 30 years, so he just wasn't down with it. But it, it would have been cool to see Dutch again. But still, it was cool to see the old the the old school Cobra Kai together again, writing and, you know, shooting the shit and everything. And uh, it kind of it ends on a bad note because Tommy dies. And it's funny, Tommy was the one that said, uh, get Daniel a body bag. And the episode ends with him in a body bag. I don't know if that's in poor taste. I don't know if we're supposed to laugh at that. but Because it was kind of a sad scene. But it's like, you see Tommy in a body bag. Shit. This show does not take itself seriously. But when it's time to hit the serious notes, it does it beautifully. But it doesn't take itself seriously, okay? This is a continuation of the Karate Kid, an 80s classic. So it has to have 80s exaggeration all over it. And I love it. The highlight of this season, definitely the last episode. That last fight at the end was ill. Like, oh man. Like, it reminded me of the first season of Daredevil, that hallway fight where it looked like it was one shot. It looked like it was one shot and you have multiple fights going on at one time. And especially the fight between Miguel and Robbie. And I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I think we're supposed to root for Robbie. But I was rooting for Miguel. I wanted Miguel to win. Miguel did win. And then he showed mercy. And that made me question. Okay, was Kreese right the whole time? Is Kreese really the bad guy? Because had Miguel followed Kreese's teaching, he would have broke Robbie's arm. And he would have been okay. But because he followed Johnny's way and showed mercy, he let up. And Robbie paralyzed him i guess 
I hope he's not paralyzed because we need to see it. We need to have a season three where it ends in a tournament where we have the last match being Robbie and Miguel in a final showdown. That would be crazy. But damn, so it's almost like that first fight with Crease and Johnny was foreshadowing what was to come later on because the same thing happened with Johnny and Crease. Johnny had Crease at his mercy, and because he showed mercy to an old man, Crease flipped the script and gave Johnny the people's elbow. So I'm like, damn, is the Cobra Kai right and Miyagi Do wrong? Because it does end with Daniel shutting the doors on Miyagi Do, like he's not, he's no longer teaching it now. And then Johnny is left without a dojo and he's no longer Cobra Kai. So it's like, damn, where do these characters go from here? And what's going to happen to Miguel? Like, and it's like, tune in next year. Not next week, but next year. And I'm like, fuck. That's the only downside about streaming these episodes. You have to wait a year to see the outcome of that. But look, y'all, I really enjoyed the shit out of this season. If you're a fan of season one of Cobra Kai, I think you are going to love this. It takes it takes these characters to different places, and I think the execution was just it was it was it was great. It was epic. Look, I I love this show. Okay, giving it a grade, I'm gonna give Cobra Kai season two an A plus, my first A plus of the year. What? You giving Cobra Kai an A plus, and you gave Endgame an A minus? Man, you don't know shit about movies, motherfucker. Oh, and let's not forget, uh, it also ended with Ali sending Johnny a friend request on Facebook. Because remember when Johnny was uh, sending Ali a message on Messenger or whatever? And I'm like, hmm, she sent him a friend request. And I know she's a doctor, so could she be the one to save Miguel? Because Miguel didn't look too good at the end. And I hated Robbie for it. I really hated Robbie for it. So to me, Robbie is the villain. Okay, I know they tried to set it up last year with Robbie was, you know, you sympathize with Robbie and you, you hated Miguel, but nah, I, I, I'm still Team Miguel. Fuck Robbie, okay? <laughs> so um, that's all I got, y'all. So what did you guys think of Cobra Kai Season 2? Comment freely below. If you like and dig this the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. As always, this is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video. We've had every other song from the first two Karate Kid movies in this show, but we need this song in Season 3. And that's all I got to say about that.